I understand. That's the important aspect of sugar. The thing that fructose does is it wrecks our appetite control. It gives us permission to eat much more than we otherwise would. Once you remove sugar, you find yourself unable to finish eating something which previously you would have been quite fine to go through and ask for pudding. Mm. So, look, if, if sugar is a, nu- a nutritional problem, if we are over-consuming sugar, how can we avoid it, David? I mean, I read not so long ago about those farmers that are genetically modifying fruit and vegetables so that they get the yep. more sugar, as I mentioned. I mean, sugar is in everything. So h- how do we avoid it? Well, it's not in everything. It's, um, it, it's in most processed food. Um, mm-hmm. There's one simple strategy that most people can follow pretty easily to avoid sugar. That is, shop the perimeter of a supermarket. That is, stick to the outside walls. Shop the perimeter, all all your staples. Yep, you get everything you need. You get your fruit, your vegetables, your meat, your dairy, your milk, your bread. I want you to take me through the the baddies in in just a moment, the the, the foods that that you really do. And people might be surprised by by some of those. But just, I'm curious to ask, are some sugars better than others? For example... I do eat sugar. I buy a low GI raw sugar. I, uh, I assume it's far better than a heavily refined powdery white sugar. Are some sugars better than others? No, you're wasting your money. No. Um, uh, sugar is all metabolically... As far as our bodies are concerned, it's all 50% fructose, 50% glucose. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's rapidure, brown sugar, raw sugar, um, grown by monks in the Tibetan Alps sugar, it's still 50% fructose. And that's all your biochemistry... Right. You shouldn't really be consuming any of it. And 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 by the way, I'll include honey, molasses, um, agave syrup, uh, and any number of other flash sugars uh, in that in that same morning. Even honey. Even honey. Honey is forty percent fructose. Um, anything that tastes sweet tastes sweet because it has fructose in it. We have a built-in fructose detector right in our mouth, and we can taste it. And that's what we like about it, is that sweet taste. And what about that? Can I just uh, take science right out of it? I mean, isn't there some sort of uh, logic to the fact that if, if our bodies like the taste of it, then surely we're meant to be eating at least a little smidgen of it? Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and prior to about 1800, the average um, person was eating about a kilo of fructose a year. So that's not much. That's about a I don't know, a teaspoon or so uh, a, a day. Sure. Um, so a kilo of fructose, and where they were getting that from was from fresh fruit when it was in season, and the rest was coming from honey. Um, and now the average person is consuming somewhere around the 30 kilos a year mark um, of fructose. Is, so, is that a worldwide figure, is it, or is that Australia? Well, Australia and the US. US, it's about 33 kilos. Australia, it's, it's a bit hard to tell because we haven't done a national nutrition survey since 1995, mm. but there's a fair bet that we're in the same ballpark as the US. We've got the Howard government to blame for that, don't we? We do indeed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's um, just quickly take us through yeah. the baddies. I think a lot of people will be surprised by, I mean, maybe not after what you've just said, not surprising, but juice, uh, fruit juice, you're saying, is, is one of the baddies to avoid. When you juice fruit, what you do is you keep the fructose and throw away everything worth keeping. Um, so you throw away all the fibre and the water and the nutrients. Mm. Um, juicing is a perverse behaviour. What you're doing <laughs> is, is keeping the rubbish Gee. and throwing away the goodness. Um, if you want to eat fruit, eat the whole fruit. What so, about school lunchbox? Um, we've got parents, um, this is a, a pet topic of mine, parents uh, are always on the lookout for convenient foods to, to put into the lunchboxes. And most parents are really good. They only want natural products for their kids. They only want sometimes even organic and they, they yep. look for the all the, the statements on the boxes that say low sugar or um, well, low really salt. Well, they really say low sugar, but they certainly say low fat. Yeah, low fat is, is the one, isn't it? Yeah. All, and all natural is the other one that you That's see right. a lot of. So yes. tell us about some of the products that go into um, uh, kids' well, lunch boxes. Probably one of the worst offenders um, is Nestle's Uncle Toby's uh, Fruit Fix, um, which is 72% sugar. Now, this is a mashed up, you, you might remember roll ups, well, this is a sort of a more condensed form of them. Um, it's a stick of 99% all natural fruit. Um, and they're very popular at the moment. Yeah, and they have a heart foundation tick on them. They what do. What parent wouldn't give that to their children? You know, it's got a heart foundation tick on it, uh, it's all natural, 100% fruit, etc., etc. 
it's 72% sugar. There's barely anything in it but sugar. I've often said in some of my blog posts um, that Heart Foundation tick is usually a fairly good guide to a high sugar product because it's something that someone's prepared to pay good money for as a marketing tool um, to ensure that people buy it without reading the label. And, and it usually means low fat, which in my opinion, my experience, it often means very high sugar. Well, as, as a general rule, as a general the, rule. the lower the fat, the higher the sugar. And as the reason for that is quite yeah. simple uh, from a chemistry perspective, which is you take the fat out of a food if the you flavor want it goes. to taste any good, you've got yep. to put the sugar and the salt in it. Exactly. So if people are, if there's somebody listening tonight who is battling a weight problem, and I know that you're not targeting this specifically for people battling weight problems, you're, you're saying this is just a basic nutritional piece of advice that everybody should follow, but what, what sort of results could people expect if they followed your advice and cut sugar right back to the, to the safe level that you think it needs to be on a daily basis? Um, well, if they're overweight, they'll probably lose weight. Um, but much more importantly than that, uh, they, their, their blood work will improve significantly. So their triglycerides will drop, their, their good cholesterol will rise, their, their bad cholesterol will decrease. Mm. Um, they will remove themselves from a lot of chronic disease risk categories, anything from kidney disease, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, um, Alzheimer's, etc. Mm. Um, so there's there's a lot of very good reasons to remove fructose from your diet and there are no good reasons to leave it in there. Well, well you've given us a lot to think about tonight, David. I appreciate your time and coming on. And, and is the book uh, uh, proving successful? Uh, yeah, look, it seems very popular and, and, and that is brilliant because the more people that know about this, the better informed we all are and the more likely we all are to have a, a long and healthy life, I suspect. Yeah, absolutely. Look, David, thanks so much for your time. Uh, that's David Gillespie there, author of Sweet Poison and the Sweet Poison Quit Guide. You're listening to It's Time to Talk.